to CP. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Hey guys, we are out here in the good old US of A in California. Are we? You saying hello, Asha? Hi. So we've spent the last 11 days out here, or at least we're spending a full 11 days out here. And part of that is the ag show that Tulare, and we met a bunch of you guys, and you completely blew us away, didn't they? Amazing people. Un like unbelievable. You really, really touched our hearts. Some of you, the gifts and the kind words you said were unbelievable. This video is all about the demo day that we did the day after the show. And actually we've just trimmed a cow, which was extremely lame and we weren't really expecting to find anything. So this video is all about the demo day at farm nearby to Larry. Like Campbell said in the intro, this is the Hoof GP. As you're just about to see, we had a good 10 or 15 trimmers out to see the demonstration and a few of them had a few observations of their own. Hey Graham, you're a little bigger in person than you are. Uh, right, I'm trying. Not I'm that trying. side. I'm about your, your shoulders and your strong back. Yeah, yeah. In all seriousness, though, what a great bunch of people to spend the day with. I seriously enjoyed showing off the capabilities of the KVK, and actually, it feels like I'm helping people out, showing them what this thing can actually do and how much easier it could make their lives. I don't work for KVK, and they don't ask me to speak well of their machines ever. They're a fantastic company and Keith, the sales rep from the USA, mentioned he was doing this demonstration and asked if I would like to do it. I'll be honest, I completely jumped at the chance because last time we were in the States, we absolutely loved it. And I'm very glad to say that this trip was no different. Trimming these gorgeous little jerseys and big Holstein cows out in what they called winter but we would call summer was an absolute pleasure. And it helped massively that the cows behaved fantastically and the feet weren't all that bad, although there were a couple of little surprises in amongst them. Everyone was genuinely interested, and when it comes to hoof trimmers, the community is fantastic. Everyone gets stuck in, everybody asks questions, everybody wants to go, and everybody helps out. And this day was absolutely no different whatsoever. As you're just about to see, a couple of the guys jumped on the chute so that they could trim a few animals themselves to see how the foot position was themselves. I'm sure you guys who work in offices, coffee shops, and shops around the world agree with me. It's all about how good the foot angle is when it comes to buying a crush. I have a Riley built. Is it a layover? Yeah, yeah, layover. Shoot? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just mounted on my truck. How'd you find that? Well, actually, I did training in Minnesota with wow. uh, some guys that work for Riley built. Wow. Okay. So they trained me, and then I bought a truck from them and drove it home. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a fast, tra <laughs> fast transaction. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has their own preferences and people learn to trim on different styles of shoot or crushes as we call them here in the UK. I really don't mind what people trim on. What I do mind is how comfortable the cow is and the end result you're able to produce. If your crush or your system can produce that, then I'm all for it. During the day, it's not all about me showing what I can do. It's absolutely nothing like that whatsoever. It's a conversation between trimmers, hoof trimmers, farmers and vets about what they would do in this situation, what they think of what I've done and what we could all do better as a collective. But more importantly than that, free donuts were also dished out. Nice. Why is here higher? Yeah, because all of the pressure is going to go through the, the dorsal wall, we call it here, so all of the structure. It's the same slightly in a horse, so the foot's not sitting on here, the foot's hanging from here. I'll be honest, we didn't like it for far the majority of the cow's feet were perfectly fine, but as luck would have it, the second I stopped trimming, in popped a lame one. But I was quickly told to get back behind the hoof. Because I was so busy talking and trimming, I never noticed this cow walking into the crush, but was told she was very, very lame indeed. She has a problem here in her white line of this rear left claw. This is the lateral or outside digit that we're dealing with, and there's a separation there in the white line. 
The white line is the junction where the interior of the hoof meets the hoof wall itself and it is really susceptible to problems just like this. When cows turn on concrete, it's not a natural thing for them to do. They're supposed to be housed outside on soft ground, ground which is forgiving. Concrete is not forgiving and as such, it can cause breaks and tears where the white line or dorsal wall or wall horn meets the solar horn. And that's exactly what's happened with this cow. Although I'm not showing you, please rest assured that almost everybody who attended had at least one go on the KVK and experienced the hoof angle for themselves. I just don't want to show you it because they didn't ask their permission to broadcast it to potentially millions of people. This cow in the crush right now is the lamest of the group we're trimming today. And if I press right here, you'll see where the point of the problem is. We look for reactions like this from cows so that we can be sure of what it is we're dealing with. We glue this block in place because I know it needs time to set and then we crack on with the job in hand. Look closely here folks, I really needed to zoom in for you to be able to see. That little black dot is a puncture mark from a piece of wire or a sharp piece of metal and if your eyesight is good enough you're just about to see a little droplet of pus which is causing the pressure within the hoof capsule and in turn causing the lameness. The puncture. I think she stood, yeah. stood on something, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I did say your eyesight would need to be good. If you can see that little droplet of pus in the cavity that I've now carved away, that is what is ultimately causing the pressure and therefore the pain for this poor cow. We need to strip back the layers of hoof horn covering the cavity beneath and that will most likely go all the way to the corium, which is what you've just seen be revealed. Although we've got to the root of the problem, if you look closely you can see a dark patch of hoof horn. That tells me that there's a cavity underneath that overburdening hoof horn and that cavity needs to be unveiled. If it isn't, it just creates the perfect pocket and environment to harbour bacteria, which would ultimately cause this cow to get an infection and become much more lame than she currently is. So although claret is beginning to appear, we need to plod on and make sure we get every last shred of loose and detached hoof horn before coating it with a topical substance that will kill any dermatitis present. After a moment or two of hesitation, thinking that her foot is still going to hurt, she takes her first steps and as you can see she's careful. Then after a few steps she starts to realise that the pain has subsided and she's much more comfortable. Oh, okay, cool. This is the new videographer here. So say thanks. What's your name? This is Jake. Ah, Jake. This is Jake. Say thank you, Jake. It's not just me who's experiencing new things. My boys are completely used to being around animals and on farms. But seeing lemons near the feed fence is a first for Campbell. Ashley was just really surprised the cow ate the lemon whole. I think she thought she was going to peel it and dice it up nicely, did you? <laughs> this is honestly about my 20th attempt at a voiceover. I can't possibly convey my feelings towards the scenes that you're watching right now. This is about the last half hour of our visit to Tillery Show where around three or four hundred of you guys came out to meet us. Your words of encouragement, your stories, your smiles, your handshakes and your hugs were incredibly heartwarming. You were incredibly generous with your words and your gifts to the whole of my family and we will never forget it. Thank you very much to Larry and the rest of the world who watch these videos. It would be impossible for me to put into words the extent of my gratitude. These images will be in my head for the rest of my days.